I built this PC for $1,360 in 2010. It is still my main computer now in 2017. Here's how it holds up today. If you're around my age, a child of the 1980s, you may remember a time in computings when things changed very quickly. A mid-range computer bought for $750 in 1999 with a 350 megahertz processor, four gigabyte hard drive, and 32 megabytes of RAM would be rendered completely useless three years later in 2002, where processors were already well into the two gigahertz range pushing close to three gigahertz. You'd barely be able to browse the internet in 2002 with a mid-range machine from 1999. This was a time when Moore's law meant more than just double the number of transistors on a chip every 18 months, but it actually translated to double the clock speeds on processors. And this translated to a rapid obsolescence of computers and meant that dollar for dollar, computers were more expensive back then. But fast forward to today in 2017, a computer bought for $750 in 2014 is still very usable today. But I want to go even further back, seven years ago, to the day I built the very computer that still drives most of my personal activity and work today. It's Wednesday, October 13th, 2010. The very first part of my new computer has arrived. This PC features an Intel Core i7-930 released in February 2010. It was the second generation of Intel Core i processors that came out. And at the time, and maybe still today, i7 processors were considered overkill. Many even said that Core i5 processors were sufficient. But when added to 6 gigabytes of RAM at a time when 1 to 2 gigabytes was standard, and an NVIDIA GTX 460 with a 64 gigabyte solid state drive, which was brand new technology at the time, on my hands was a computer that was somewhere in the low to middle range of the high end of PCs in 2010. It was also gigantic with this Cooler Master High Airflow 932 case, big, fat, and ugly, and has made me breathe so much dust I've actually gotten my childhood asthma back. Now, the best value in self-built desktops comes from upgradability and expandability. I upgraded the system once in 2015, five years after I built it. I went from six gigabytes of RAM to 24 gigabytes, which is still very high by today's standards and probably overkill for a system with this generation of processor. And I went from a GTX 460 to a 970 allowing me to play higher-end games even though I can't really record or stream them sometimes. Also, after years of giving up on the Agility 3 SSD and using conventional hard drives, I upgraded to the Samsung 840 Pro 256GB, which I still use today. This computer spanned three distinct periods of time in my life. The first was when I was just about to graduate from school. Back then, I was able to play StarCraft II at the highest settings on an HD monitor that I had bought. The second was when I was working as an intern at a hospital, not able to play many games, but quickly found programming to be a valuable tool and learning point to use in my career. And as expected, this computer was great at building and compiling the simple programs that I wrote. The third period in my life this computer spanned was when I started making YouTube videos. While the machine was able to handle video in 720 and 1080 with ease running Premiere Pro, it struggles with 4K video. For 1080, if the video is 30 minutes long, this computer will take 30 minutes to render that video. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio of video time to render time. For 4K video, a 30 minute video will take two hours to render, so a one to four ratio. This makes it unfeasible for me to synchronize a simple audio track with video that might not have that good of an audio track. I also have trouble streaming any games more intensive than the simplistic 2D indie game Nuclear Throne. 
In fact, Overwatch streams are almost impossible without extreme scaling down, and some simple 2D indie games even lag when I try to record them. But playing games is generally not a problem if I want to game at 1080 at high settings. Not ultra, but high. Games like Doom and Dishonored 2 run at a smooth frame rate thanks to the GTX 970. The build quality of the Cooler Master case and the power supply have been extremely reliable. Knock on wood, this is the most stable system I have ever built. With only the OCZ Agility 3 SSD giving me severe issues when I first built it. Overall, I had no stability issues with this PC since 2011 and it has lived through Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, and Windows 10. Bernard, how do you feel about finally constructing your computer? Good. It's freaking it's black bad. behemoth. Press it. So how does the system fare in benchmarks? Well, this is the first time I've ever run a benchmark on the system because I never really felt the need to run synthetic numbers on this machine. It performs as you would expect for a seven-year-old computer. Not that great, but I would suspect out of all of the computers that are available out there today, the billions of devices that are out there, I would suspect as of today, this computer is somewhere in the top 50th percentile of computers that are being used out there. Not too bad for a computer I paid $1,360 for in 2010. So there's two issues I have with this computer today. The first is that there's only two SATA 3 ports. This limits me greatly on transfer speeds of drives that are well able to take advantage of that extra bandwidth. In fact, only my boot drive is connected to one of the SATA drives, and then I have my RAID array, which holds all of my videos, on 7200 RPM hard drives connected to the other port. The second issue I have with the system is that all but two of the USB ports are USB 3.0. Now, back in 2010, USB 3.0 was fairly new, but seven years later, it's fairly ubiquitous, and having a bunch of USB 2.0 ports is kind of a buzzkill. Now, honestly, neither of these issues are super pressing on me today. I could probably even use the system for another year if you asked me to, but I think it's probably time to build something new. So what's the takeaway from all of this? Well, computers over the last 10 years are not progressing in specs as fast as they were in 1999. Having the latest and greatest PC with all the new hardware to save a couple percentage points on a benchmark or to save a few seconds in video rendering doesn't really make sense for the thousands of dollars that you would have to spend to upgrade over the last generation. In fact, today, your money can stretch for a much longer period of time than it did 18 years ago. I suspect building a $2,000 computer today in 2017 will likely last to 2024 and beyond. After all, I paid about $2,000 with upgrades for this computer in total. Now the thing I've learned about technology after all of these years is that the ability to do something new is much more valuable than the ability to do that same thing faster. The invention of the camera was a bigger event than the invention of a faster camera. In fact, even here on YouTube, people forgive bad image quality and bad sound quality if the story or if the subject of the video are significant. For example, this video of New York City in 1987 was shot on a camera that's well inferior to even what we would have on some of the cheapest phones on sale today. For half an hour, and I just, uh, I'm like going out of my skull. So be here any second. Yeah. Well, meet us there. Where? But the notion of capturing images is much more significant than having that image captured in a 4K resolution. Desktops, laptops, and even smartphones have reached a point where we just have small incremental upgrades from year to year. We've largely been doing the same things with these devices now for almost 10 years. One vector of tech innovation today are these small embedded computers available for as low as $5, like the Raspberry Pi Zero. They enable us to do even more than we could ever imagine, all at speeds several orders of magnitude greater than what was available in 1999. And in another 10 years, 
They'll be several orders of magnitude faster than what was available in 2010. Thanks so much for watching this weekend. Have a great week, and I'll see you next weekend. Adios, amigos.